Who would have thought that? This cleaning lady is the one who has the most money in this bank. And her money was stolen by exploiting a loophole in the bank. In just three months, she stole hundreds of millions of dollars because her husband was unemployed. She worked as a housekeeper at the Federal Reserve. While cleaning, she stares at the shredded old bills and ponders. If only this money could be taken out. By chance, she was shopping in a supermarket. She found a lock identical to the one on the money truck. She began to have second thoughts. First she studied the process of destroying old banknotes and devised a plan. All that was left was for two people to work with her. She found Mary, who was responsible for shredding the old banknotes. She told her about her plan. Mary had refused. It was a very risky plan. She had two children, but for the sake of her two children. She agrees to go along with her plan. She agreed to go along with her plan. She then approached Betty, who was responsible for transporting the old banknotes. Betty was very quick to agree. The next day, she first went to the dead end of the surveillance and surreptitiously changed the locks on the truck to her own. Then, on the way, she tells Betty the number of the van. While waiting for the lift, she quietly unlocked it and threw the money inside into the bin behind her. Since the surveillance camera can only capture her head on, so it looks like she's just dancing on the camera. The money is then taken to the shredding room. Mary had gone to the toilet in advance and found the original lock at just the right time to shred the car. Then she unwittingly replaces it. A few minutes later, the cleaning lady collects the rubbish bags. The three of them went to the toilet and hid the money in their own closet. The whole plan was seamless. These three women stole 100 million from a bank, and no one even noticed that. It turns out that they were stealing old banknotes that the bank was about to destroy. The three women returned to their home and began to divide the money. They were so excited that they would never have to worry about money again. From then on, the they kept stealing old banknotes from the bank with this plan. In just three months, they stole hundreds of millions of dollars. The cleaning lady's life became rich. Mary sends her son to an aristocratic college until one of the operations goes awry. The key to the lock is accidentally dropped into the sink. The only way out now is to. The only way out is to get the spare key that Betty has on her person. Fearing that the bank might know about the three of them, they didn't have each other's phone numbers. She had to call her husband and ask him to find Betty's boyfriend. He then contacted Betty through her boyfriend. Betty stuck the spare key in the lift with gum. The cleaning lady then removes the gum and dropped it to Mary when the security guard wasn't looking. The three of them thought they hadn't been spotted, but the security guard saw what was going on. He had a crush on Mary. He didn't report the incident. Instead, they found Mary at the end of the day and tried to persuade her to come back. But in the end, he was seduced by Mary's seduction. He was pulled in. Under the cover of the security guard, the thieving scheme goes more smoothly. The money gets bigger and bigger. Betty gets a new caravan. The cleaning lady gets a villa. But how can a cleaning lady afford a villa? Soon the federal bank investigators are on to her, knowing that the story is about to be exposed. A few people panic. Too much stolen money to spend. Federal investigators have also been on their radar. They decided to destroy the money. Betty put the money in the caravan. She blows up the caravan. But before they can run, they are stopped by a helicopter. Mary plans to destroy the money by fire, but is caught in the middle of the fire by the police who arrive. The housekeeper has her husband shred the money with a paper shredder. Halfway through the shredding process, he is arrested by the police who rush in. The cleaning lady leaves her husband and escapes over the wall, but she didn't abscond. Instead, she took a bag full of money. She found the best lawyer in the area. Because there was no conclusive evidence, there was no hard evidence that the men had stolen the banknotes. The bank manager was confronted by the lawyer and, and could not admit in front of the media that his bank was flawed. Wouldn't that be admitting that he had failed to do his job, so he withdrew the case. Just when the three of them thought the case was over, the lawyer told them the bad news. The lawyer gave them the bad news. Because the money was not taxed, they had to hand over all the money. To avoid criminal penalties, they had to hand over the money. Although they were all very upset, but this was the best they could do. The three men said goodbye to each other and left. They all went back to their lives of poverty and misery. Six months later, the three are together again. The cleaning lady says she has a surprise for them. She takes them to a basement, opening the door. They open the door and find a room full of banknotes. It turns out that the housekeeper had hidden every penny she had stolen. She had hidden away a sum of money. It had accumulated over time. It was a fortune. The three of them are overjoyed. This is the end of the film.